Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd, and this is not my girlfriend. This is Chelsea Maybe. Uh, some of you know um, she was my girlfriend for years. Um, and then we broke up. I'm just kidding. We did not. Did we? We, oh, we shit. did for a while, but then we're back. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Not this week, right? It was, it okay. was rough times. Yeah, there were times. Okay, so uh, this is our video of how not to get engaged. <laughs> All right, so let's break this down um show them the evidence go ahead evidence evidence okay there's evidence okay all right so here's the thing um today is september the 5th for those who want a little context of date um and then um if you go back um to probably about the same time a year ago, and possibly earlier than that. Um, I wanted to Beyonce this girl, right? And, and I, um, for those who don't know, I wanted to put a ring on it. Um, and it seemed like every time I was gonna do it, something would happen. And like a lot of you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, job issues covid one of my children having a huge medical condition uh financial troubles and then those three things re those four things repeated themselves over the last two years and we're still trying to go through um still trying to go through all those things but about I cannot stress to you guys how much I am just along for the ride on this video. I have no idea what's about to come out of his mouth just like you guys. So Here's a hint. Neither do I. <laughs> Great. All right. So um numerous attempts uh a ring um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight musical artists. Um, <laughs> one, two, three, f at least four YouTube channels, numerous accomplices, um, and over the last six months, I've been trying to make this happen. And I've been trying to do it in an old school nerd way. But more importantly, I wanted it to be a way that Richard would do it. And who's that? That would be this sitting bearded dick here. Um, because this needed to be something that was worthy of her. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by is all of you get to see the fun me. You guys get to see the silly me. You guys get to see the um, devil may care. Everything is funny. Um, everything is just one laugh after another guy. The level of stress, time, energy, and frustration that goes into editing videos, making videos, always having a smile, always having to put the brighter side on things. Um, anytime I click that little button up there that says start stream, Everything that's on my shoulders, I have to put it off camera and be old school nerd for all of you. The person, when you take that off your shoulders, you don't get to put it on the ground. You have to hand it to someone to hold for you while you do the stupid stuff. She holds that stuff up. She's also my lead moderator. She's also the corraller of the undetermined misfit toy island that is my community talking about you rob <laughs> and 
I can't say enough about who she is as a person. She stepped into the role of a de facto mother figure for my kids when they struggled with their own moms. Um, so uh, terrifyingly quickly, how much my how quickly my kids jumped all over that. Um, she is the mama llama to my kids. She is apparently the greatest person in the eyes of my dog. I used to have a dog. She took that shit um, pretty quick. Um, not by her choice, his choice. So all those things led to me going, this is the person. So you think, all right, get a ring, come up with a cool idea, do something funny, do something memorable, make it great, and then just ask her to marry you. It doesn't work like that. Because I have this problem. Not you. Yeah, I have a problem. My problem is I never can find the perfect situation. Okay, there are no moonlit beaches where we live. Uh, romantic restaurants aren't exactly a, oh my God, I can't believe we're going to this restaurant. I can't do like a romantic dinner and say, this is the place to pop a question because we're foodies. And every time we travel, we find the greatest restaurant experiences. So finding restaurant experiences is not a special occasion. It's a Tuesday. Correct? Yeah. So what do you do? Well, I thought I had to do, I had to figure out a way for it to be something that connects us. And in the last two years, all of you have connected us. All of you have um, kind of centered, put a synergy between the two of us when it comes to music and experiences. And back in April, uh, I was invited to go to Oregon to meet one of you, Michael Dietz and his family, to see a concert with Hallocene, Violet Orlandi, and Lauren Babbitt. Now, here's the thing. This is where it gets weird. At the time, and this is where things start spiraling. I had already failed to see Sabaton twice <laughs> because COVID and a guy almost dies for Judas Priest. Um, and with COVID going on, I thought I need to wait till after COVID. Well, this last April, we got a chance to go see Hallocene, Violet Orlandi, and Lauren Babick in Portland. Now, the reason why we went all the way to Portland to see them was because they hadn't announced any other tours except for West Coast. And Violet Orlandi was coming from Brazil on her first tour anywhere. And Lauren Babick was going to go all the way to Portland and run the gambit. So three artists that I follow on my channel and three people that I wanted to meet, not only in person, but for the channel. I wanted to be able to meet these people, get them to sign, you know, the wall, all that stuff, you know, the, everything we were doing. But I wasn't going to go alone. Now, here's what happens. I introduce her to Lauren Babbick. I was a fan of Lauren Babbick for about a year and a half, two years before I even started YouTube. And I knew how much I loved her covers and I loved her music. Now, I know that Chelsea loves amazing singer songwriters and she loves a powerful woman with a powerful voice, a little bit of attitude. And there's something about a texture grit in the voice. There's a vulnerability in the songwriting. There's a vulnerability in the vocal styling that appeals to her. I catch on this because I listen to her music and I like her music. I introduced her to Lauren Babbick. She falls in love with Lauren Babbick. Lauren Babbick's Easy On Me, Lauren Babbick's covers from her other bands, her album with Red Hand and Denial, her, her band, Crazy 88, all the stuff. In fact, I think it was the song Colors with Crazy 88 that she went, 
oh my god i love this person and then as we do reactions to lauren she just goes nuts now she also really really loves violet orlandi because violet does amazing stuff she digs what halicine does she loves how they take all these classic songs and makes covers like we all do the day before the halicine concert in portland or actually uh, two days three days before what was the day before we arrived know. we arrived the day before I'm a now passenger. i've traveled all over the world i normally travel by myself why because i'm horrible to travel with no you're not to you hmm. and i don't like traveling with people i don't because i'm one of those people that has it's weird I have everything planned out, yet I'm extremely flexible when I travel. She is too. So for the first time, we were getting on a plane together. And on our plane, all we could think about was, it is so easy traveling with you. When you can travel across country with someone and you like them more when you get where you're going, that doesn't happen very often. And then we start spending time. I'm there the first time she puts her feet in the Pacific Ocean. I'm there the first time she sees the Pacific Ocean. I'm there the first time she sees an alpaca. I get to share all these moments and I realize in that moment, while all this is going on, she's just like, oh my God, alpacas. Oh my God, the ocean. Oh my God, my feet are in the sand. Oh my God, oh my God, all these things. While she's experiencing all of that, these are the thoughts I'm having. Oh my God, this is the one. Oh my God, there is no other. Oh my God, this is the person. I already kind of knew, but it was locked. That was the moment it was completely locked. So we get to the Hallocene concert. And when we do, a plan was hatched. I knew that I was going to see Sabaton in October 1st, next month. We were going to see Sabaton in Houston. And I'd already talked to Tommy from Sabaton. And Tommy's like, dude, we've got to get together. We have to have fun. I want to meet you. I, I want to meet her. We're going to we'll do some. We're going to go to Bucky's and get, get beaver nuggets and, and brisket. You must show me the Texas brisket. I'm like, okay, Tommy, whatever. Talk to the record label. Nuclear Blast is like, absolutely. We'll put you on the guest list. Tommy and those guys are going to, you guys are going to have so much fun. It's going to be great. Absolutely. So I'm like, this is, this is perfect. This is the greatest thing ever. So my thought was, I'll ask her to marry me at the Sabaton show. Because everyone, everyone, every lady on every girl's dream, no matter what they tell you, Every girl's dream is to be drug on stage in front of a couple of thousand people while a Swedish historical heavy metal band with fire, sandbags, bob wire, and cannons is playing music and, and she gets proposed to it. That is every woman's dream. I don't care what they tell you. It's true. By the way, that's not true. <laughs> but at the time, yeah, didn't think about it. Yeah, so, so we're at the we're at the meet and greet at the Hallocene show. Now, understand, okay? There was no there was no Hallocene show in Houston yet. There was no Hallocene Lauren Babick, David Michael Frank Midwest East Coast tour yet. So all I knew at this time was the next concert her and I are going to is. I don't even know sabaton. Anymore. Sabaton. At the time, oh yeah, that yeah. was Sabaton was the next one. So during the meet and greet, we get there, we go outside, and I see Hallocene, Lauren, Babic, and Violet Orlandi eating salads on a patio table set. And I look at her and I'm like, hey, come see. Now we had just filmed the Easy On Me reaction to Lauren Babic's Easy On Me and to her greatest showman, which is one is which is by the way. She announces her favorite cut cover that she's ever done. And she reacted to it. And she professed her undying love to this other woman from Canada. 
she walks out the door and I see Lauren pop up out of a chair, run up to her and hug her. Normally it's the crazy, crazy fans that run up and try to hug the artist. But the artist got up and hugged her. So she immediately is overwhelmed by this experience. Being the person that I am, not me, this person, I hatch a plan. While this one is um, talking to Violet for the first time and Addie and they're talking about all the stuff, Lauren goes inside to take pictures. And I corner Lauren. And this is what happens when I corner Lauren. Ready? <laughs> Watch this. Hey Chelsea, it's October 1st. And if you've seen this video, approximately about 30, 30 minutes ago, I asked you to marry me. Hopefully you said yes. Lauren knows first. Know. That's the look on her face. Oh my God. Are you happy? I'm so happy. Because if I don't do it, you're going to have to do it. I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> she's already, yeah, so there you go. You're the first person to know. Oh my God. It's, we're going to do it at the Sabaton show in October in, in Houston. She will. She's going to love it. Tell her congratulations. Congratulations. See? All right. So here's the thing. She just met her. And I completely tell Lauren Babbitt, Lauren Babbitt to her face, that I'm going to propose to her October 1st, which is next month, by the way, at the Sabaton show. Um, didn't even have a ring yet, <laughs> by the way. Um, and, uh, this video was then the video was then saved onto my Google Drive on my work computer. Why would you do such a thing, old school nerd? Because I have so many videos that I film every single day, constantly from Jet Coffee, you've seen them in the morning, everything on YouTube, everything. There's so much content that I create the odds of me accidentally posting that video, pretty damn high. Put the video away, and that's all that needs to be said at this point. Then two things happen. Number one, she goes, we start having conversations. I'm starting to test the water about if I should ask her to marry, see the face? Cause she knows this conversation. I start testing the waters. I'm such an asshole. <laughs> Wait, get, <clears throat> could you get a little closer no. to the microphone and, and no. say that again? No. Nobody heard that. No. What was it? Uh-uh. Okay. Okay, De okay, Dennis Leary. We'll get back to it later. So what <laughs> so I start testing the waters. Like, hey, if we're gonna do this, you know, if I was ever to ask you you know, to do this. I mean, you don't want me to embarrass you, right? I didn't say anything about it. She goes, as long as it's not like at a fucking Sabaton concert, as long as you don't like drag me on a stage somewhere, I'm fine. Whoops. And at that point, my thought was, some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. And so now, <laughs> so now my original plan is done, but I'm still in this and Lauren Babb is expecting mm -hmm. a proposal, damn it. <laughs> so luckily for me, through no coordinated effort, from me to them, Hallocene announces we're going on tour, Midwest. Um, hey, old school nerd, we appreciate you flew 2,000 miles to Portland, Oregon to see us, but we're also going to be with Lauren Babbitt 
and David Michael Frank and Just Joe Syracuse and all the people you like in Houston, three hours away from you in July. Score. They announced that, what, April, May? I'm like, this can happen. Hey, Lauren, uh, change of plans, um, idea, let me know if you get this message. Hey, what's up, old schoolman? Hey, Lauren, uh, remember the video we made? Oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I know, okay, change of plans. Um, this is not gonna wait until October 1st. And she doesn't want me to ask her to marry her in front of uh, a Swedish heavy metal band. What do you have in mind? Well, okay, you guys are coming to Houston, right? Yeah. So maybe we could do it there because you're going to be in Houston. Oh my God, that would be awesome. Let's do it. Thus began two months of conversations between Lauren, Hallocene, Just Joe Syracuse, Sam, the merch guy slash photographer of the tour, and David Michael Frank got wrapped up in the end. I got with Albany. Do you guys remember Albany? She was the amazing person that was a super fan of Intercy. And we just happened to run into her at a Mexican restaurant. We're having lunch. And I mentioned the word Ventercy. And she goes, oh my God, I love Ventercy. And then we got Ventercy to sign one of her original arts of, of Avian. Remember that? She also works at a company that she used to work at, and this person here designed her own fucking wedding ring. Her engagement ring was designed by her. I somehow was able to ask her months in advance, hey, if I was ever to get you a ring, hypothetical, uh, which one would you want? This person pulls up the data file the design uh, spreadsheet, stone sizes, colors, types, um, rings, like the whole breakdown spreadsheet she would use for designing jewelry and sends it to me in a, in a zip file. Here's the SKU. Here's the SKU number, just scan and purchase. I send that to Albany. Albany knocked it out of the park. The ring was in production. Now, Still got to get it on her hand. So through coordination, we found out that Hallocene was coming to Houston. And you guys know Michael Alvarado, right? Michael Alvarado is like, dude, I got tickets for me and my wife. We're going. We're going to be there when it happens. Cool. Mike, if you guys don't know, is like his best friend. And he's like my big brother. Yeah. So I buy her parents two tickets to the Hallocene show. Um, just in case they wanted to be there, we could sneak them in the back at the end. Now here's the plan. Here's the plan. She didn't know any of this, okay? So here's the plan that we talked to Hallocene and Lauren Babbitt. And I actually made a video. And I sent them the video, and this was the video plan that I sent to David Michael Frank, Addy, Brad, Lauren, and Just Joe Syracuse. To those five people. Hey guys, I have a question to ask. Here's my plan. I was thinking, um, when you guys come to Houston, you know how in Portland, Oregon, it was your first sold out show of the tour? And you guys were done with your set and you did the encore. And you got, okay, good night, everybody. And you guys were just going to get off the stage. And I stopped them and I said, guys, you can't get off the stage. Let me take a picture of all of you in front of your first sold out crowd. Because bands do the picture in front of the crowd. They, they, they didn't think to do that. So like, oh my God, thank you. And so I took the picture. Here's the way in. I said, let's do it again, except whenever I go to take the picture of you guys in front of the crowd in Houston, one of you, Brad, Addy, Lauren, doesn't matter. One of you go, hey, old school nerd, because you took the picture in Portland, why don't you get in the picture with us? 
and let Chelsea maybe take the picture. She's got a better phone than you anyway, which is true. Even though Sam is a photographer and could do it. However, Sam's job was to be off stage to the side filming the whole thing. Chelsea was going to go up in front of Joe's drum riser. I was going to get next to Lauren and Brad and Addie and Joe, the drummer, and David Michael Frank, and maybe even just Joe Syracuse. It, it, we didn't get to that part, but essentially, whenever they go one, two, three, to take the picture, ring. So what would happen is, Chelsea, the original plan was for Chelsea to take a picture of being proposed to. I was smart. But just like everything else that has occurred to her and I, COVID, job issues, illnesses, financial problems, like all of you out there, this was not going to go off that easy. Segue to July. Now, the concert was on July 21st. And on July the 18th, I send a message to her. Hey, babe, I need to go. Um, I need to go. Uh, your mom needs me to go to Broussard to their house. And I'm supposed to go help check something at the rent house. And she wants me to check for her. Um, I'll be right back. Didn't lie. I did need to check something. And I also stopped at Chick-fil-A. I stopped at Chick-fil-A on the way. Do you think your parents might like a sandwich? I don't know. Let me ask them. We would love a sandwich. Oh, T. Thank you so much. Thank you so oh, you're such a thank you. Oh, because her parents are very, very, very selfless people. Now, I didn't lie about that either. Why? I just failed to mention that I needed a reason to go to Chick-fil-A because it was the restaurant closest to where Albany works so she could give me the ring. So I, I get the ring. Uh, Albany gives me the ring. I hand her an order of fries. Thank you very much. And then I proceed to her parents' house and I show her parents the ring and her next door and her parents' next door neighbor, come to find out. And so her parents have now seen, seen the ring they're excited. A lot of you have seen the ring. I sent a picture of the ring to everybody on the tour. David Michael Frank, Just Joe, Lauren, Hallison. Uh, everybody's seen it. Um, my kids have seen it. Actually, 32 people saw the ring before she saw the ring. We are getting ready to go see Hallocene on July 21st. And on July 20th, we get the horrible news. I'm sorry, July 19th, we get the horrible news. Lauren Babick has COVID. And Lauren Babick is trapped in Midland, Odessa, Texas. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh crap. We're still moving forward. Now she's thinking, oh, Lauren can't make it to the show. I'm thinking, Holy crap, can we still do this? And oh yeah, oh, I hope Lauren's better too. So I messaged Lauren, she's like, oh my God, I won't, I'm not gonna be able to be there. I am so sorry. I said, we can still make it happen. Remember, you're on tour with a bunch of amazing people, you know, and they love you and we love you and we'll make this happen. Contact Brad and I contact just Joe Syracuse and I'm like, dude, we're still gonna make this happen. Don't worry about it. So they do the show in Dallas. Still good. She thinks I'm just worried about making it to the show and everything else. She doesn't realize I've got all this stuff going on. So we drive to Houston. We stop at Bucky's, get Lauren Babbitt, the whole Bucky's package. You remember the video, the whole Bucky's swag box for Lauren. We did all that. That's her whole focus. We get to the hotel room. We're in the hotel room. I'm trimming the beard, you know, doing this stuff, you know, the trimming of the neck, you know, shaving, getting ready. She's 
packing a bag full of Bucky stuff for Lauren. At that moment, Hallisine announces they have to postpone the Houston, Atlanta, and Nashville shows. So now, I can't propose to her because the show's not there. At the same time, I've got the ring in my luggage right next to her as she's packing this bag. I say, Chelsea, they just postponed the show tonight. They can't make the show. They're having to run to Tennessee to lock down and, and get ready and, and recover. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, maybe we can find something else to do. You know, this happens. No big deal. You know, we'll see them on the next time. We've already, we already saw them in Portland. That's not the only thing that was supposed to happen. She didn't know this. <laughs> so <laughs> she's no big deal. And I'm like crushed because now I have no plan to propose to her except for Sabaton. And I can't do that because she's already told me. Please don't propose to me in front of thousands of people next to a giant metal band with fire on the stage. Okay. Caught that. Now, what some of you don't know is that when Hallisin and David Michael Frank and Just Joe and, and, and Sam and Lauren had to postpone the Atlanta, Houston, and Nashville shows, it it killed them. They didn't want to do that. They want to perform for their fans. They're trying to put together a tour, and it's it's so hard to do it when you're an independent band. And they literally had to post the announcement and haul ass across Texas, Arkansas, and to Tennessee to really get to a safe space to lock down and recover. But you know what they did? They took the time to FaceTime me in the hotel room and still keep the secret. Hey, old school nerd. Hey, Chelsea, we are so sorry that we can't do the show tonight, but we're going to, we're going to find a way to make this right. Now, here's the thing. I don't think they FaceTimed everybody that bought a ticket for the show, but I know as much as I talked about it, as many videos as I sent all the hype and excitement that I, I told all of these amazing artists, they knew that it hit me. They knew that I was crushed. She thinks, Oh my God, there's such amazing people letting us know that they can't make this show. They're so sweet. You must mean so much to them. See, your channel does mean something to them. They, they took the time. This is her telling me, by the way. They took the time to message you directly that they couldn't make the show. See, your channel does matter to people. That, and I had been coordinating with them for months to propose to my girlfriend. So yeah, they did feel bad. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but yeah, um, they but they are the fact that they messaged me. Okay, Brad's driving on the interstate in the rain. Addie's in the passenger seat, going, "Oh my god, old school! We're so sick. We're so sorry." She was she looked so she looked so miserable, and poor David's going, "Oh my god, I want to die!" You know, <laughs> just they're trying to get get to where they could recover. The fact they messaged me meant so much to me, and I realized, you know, this Here this could work out really we well. Are born to be kings. We're the I forgot to turn those off for this video, but anyway, so and I do appreciate that, Risa. But so, um, so as we're as we're, um, I'm trying to collect what I'm going to do next. So now, I I don't have any plan to propose. The, 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 I, and I was waiting to see, I was waiting to see if any, if anyone, um, if, if the announcement was going to come for the rescheduling for the show or whatever. And just like my plans to propose and our channel and our struggles for the last two years, Hallison can't catch a break.
Not only do they have to perform night after night after night after night, they have to get home to see their young son. <laughs> Joe, the drummer, he's got to get home to his, his kids. Just Joe Syracuse, he has a daughter he's got to get back to. And they have a limited window before they have to go to Europe. And when they get home, Addy goes through throat infections and she gets sick again and not from COVID, but just, you know, and Lauren struggles with it. It's just, it's a hard recovery. So I'm like, I can't wait for them to reschedule this show because it could take months. It may not be till next year. I don't know when they would reschedule something. So we go through all these things. And Thursday, well, the week, the week before, we're going through all these things, and I just realized I can't wait anymore. I, I have this ring hidden in the house. See, she's laughing. She's like, that ring has been in this house this whole time, and I didn't know it was here. Um, I had to literally message all my kids in a panic, because all my kids thought I was proposing to her in Houston. So knowing my kids, I'm like, I know my kids. Come about 11 o'clock midnight, they were like, so how'd it go? Were you, were you surprised? Did he do a good job? Yeah, because that's what my kids would do that. So I had to panically message him, don't tell her anything. The concert got postponed. I didn't propose. We'll have to wait. Please don't say anything. Shut the hell up. <laughs> you know, also to her parents, to Mike, to all of you that knew that, I, some of you knew that I was doing, I had to like, Okay, I had to like panic to not ruin it. So we get together and I develop this new channel called Old School F3. Films, food, and friends. And part of it is her and I doing reactions together. And doing reactions with her makes my reactions way better. She makes me better. And during all this, she's, it, it just, I can't wait any longer. I, I can't wait. I mean, we're going to see Burt Kreischer. I'm not proposing to her in front of Burt Kreischer shirtless on the fucking stage. I can't do it at Sabaton. You can't do it at Electric Cowboy. No. And you can't do it at Bloodywood because it takes seven days to do that kind of shit when you're dealing with an Indian culture. Seven days would be awesome. But, so I just said, you know what? I'm, I told her, I said, we're going to go have dinner. Let's go. I don't care. Let's just go someplace nice. Someplace that's just for us. Well, there's a really nice restaurant here in town that I've only taken her to. I've never gone with anyone else. I've never gone until I took her. It's kind of our spot. So we go and I'm thinking, you know, during the really nice chocolate souffle, I will find a way to ask her. We didn't even make it to the crab claws. And why did we not make it to the crab claws, Chelsea? Because <laughs> you couldn't wait. You were, you were crawling out of your skin. I was crawling out of my skin, but actually the reason why I did it was because of something she said. We had just, we had been filming the, we have been trying to film the, um, the Game of Thrones House of the Dragon thing. And I re-edited that video four times, taking 12 hours to do so. I was so stressed out, but she was so poised and she was so supportive. And I told her, I said, I were sitting at the table. We had just gotten our drinks. She had, we had just made our order, waiting for the appetizers to come out. And I said, hey, I, I just want to thank you for everything you did this week. I mean, it's really coming together. This one goes... That's because we, we're a great team. I started crying because she said, because we're a great team in everything. With the kids, with each other, with all of this, with all of you. And I just said, it reminds me, something we got to talk about. And I put the box on the table. And I just laid everything out. I literally told her everything that we just talked about on this video all the craziness that I've tried to do to get to that moment. I told her about how I wanted her in my life. I wanted to have rocking chairs. 
I want it to grow old. I want it to, you know, you're the person. Da -da 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 -da. And at no point in 15 minutes of rambling, which you guys know I can do, we're already up to 40 fucking minutes on this video. At no point did I ask, will you marry me? Nope. I, I asked every other question. I did ask questions. I didn't ask that question. So I get all the way to the end and she's just like, you know, you haven't asked the question at all. So once she pinned me down, I, was, I literally sucked it up and, and just like, like the Fonz trying to say he's sorry in happy days. I'm like, will you, yeah, I was, I cotton mouth completely. And then she started crying because it was a culmination of so many years of ups and downs of constant battles that we've overcome together. Some we've won, some we've lost, some we've taken losses, but we always did it together. And then she just looks at me and she starts crying and I'm like, and she's just like, it's real. And I'm like, yeah, it's real. But at the same time, nothing has changed. Granted, her, her left wrist hurts because she's trying to hold that shit up. But other than that, nothing has changed. She's still my person. So, I, with all the ideas, all the schemes, all the plotting, all the arrangements, all the coordination of schedules and people and everything else, it came down to her just telling me we make a great team. And I, I just... I just, I just didn't ask her for 10 minutes. I talked about it with a ring, with a ring in front of her, with the ring on her hand. I talk about it for 10 minutes. You talked about it for 15 minutes with the box closed on the table. Never asked a question. And he hasn't done the nervous uh rambling thing with me since our first date so i'm sitting on the other side of the table just i don't even know what to say because we're not like that anymore with each other okay this is something all of you will really understand I have 72,000 subscribers on YouTube, 10 million views on my YouTube channel for one reason and one reason only. I can come up with shit instantly. I can come up with jokes on the fly. I don't need a script. I can literally wing it no matter what's going on. I don't do reactions with knowledge beforehand. I don't watch a reaction and come up with jokes and then record it later. I know people do it. I don't do it. I do them live. That's why they're such crap. The production value is crap because I want to make sure it looks like it's live because it is all in one take. That's my whole joke. I got a whole shirt, 100% real because I can do that. It's my gift. My gift of being able to come up with any situation at any time and just play it off is my gift. Nobody's better than me. The people that are, make money being comedians doing it. Andrew Schultz, Bill Burr, etc. There's only one person I can't do it to. There are times when she talks to me, I can't find words. I can't find thoughts. I can't find anything that just plays off. And Friday night, just trying to say Will you marry me? It's four fucking words. I rambled for 15 minutes without saying those words. And the last time I did that was when we first met our first date. Do you remember what we talked about? Yes. 
Okay. Do you want to tell them or should I? You go ahead. Our first conversation ever was me rambling for an hour explaining to her how you never find a person that check marks all your boxes. Most people have 10 things they look for in a person, but most people out there will settle for someone that just checks one or two of those boxes. But just talking to her for five minutes, she was checking box after box after box. In, in the years that we've been together, and in the last three years that she's been in this house with me and my kids, being a part of my family, she checks boxes that I didn't even have before I met her. I discover boxes that I wanted after I realized she was already in that box checked. Here's the thing. I know I make a lot of shit up on these videos. The reason why she's crying is she remembers that conversation. I didn't make that up. My name is Old School Nerd. And this is my f This is my f f This is my no longer girlfriend, my fiance Chelsea maybe. We have to change your name. To what? Well, you're not Chelsea maybe anymore. Chelsea reserved. Chelsea, um, <laughs> Chelsea scheduled. Uh, Chelsea, what? Um, Chelsea definitely. Chelsea definitely. That's nice. Okay, we we might be able to do that. We'll see. We'll see. That 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 may work. That may work. Okay. So, well. Thank you for saying congratulations. We're not there yet. And if we know anything, as creative as I am, I'm also creative in ways of screwing something up. So we will see how we go with that. Hey, everybody. Um, those of you who are here live in Twitch as we film this, thank you so much for being here and being patient with us. Uh, Prisoner24, sorry for interrupting your subscription by making a heartfelt video. And no, we know you didn't mean to. You did have no idea. Uh, Chelsea, for sure. Chelsea for real and for true. Chelsea for real and for true. Uh, Chelsea for, I can't believe. Um, <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea Puyai. Uh, <laughs> no. All right. Uh, hey, guys. Um, we love you guys. Um, I can honestly say, uh, Chelsea will tell you this. Ready? Okay. That's where I cry. Mm. Fuck. Um, Chelsea has a lot of friends. She has a lot of people in her life that make her happy. She's made amazing friends because she does make friends very easily. Uh, and she knows how to read people. And she has an ama some amazing people that she's introduced me to in the, last, in, the, in the last decade that we've known each other. But I don't make friends. Ever. I don't make friends easy. Um... I come from a childhood of bullying and betrayal from my own family and friends, and I don't make friends easy. In fact, before I started this channel, I had one friend. One. Two, if you count her. And since I've started this channel, I can easily say I have friends that measure in the dozens and acquaintances that measure in the hundreds. And apparently suckers that measure in the thousands. I don't know why y'all follow me. I'm not that good at this. But anyway, I just want to say to all of you that are in this chat and those that see this video, you know who you are. There's a lot of mics. <laughs> There's a lot of mics. There's a lot of Chris's. There's a lot of people from all over the world. And I'm so honored that I've met people from Finland and Iceland and all corners of the United States and Australia and Africa, freaking Africa. What? Um, so many of you from all over the world. Thank you so much for being, for, for people, for pe being who you are. 
Um, and to my two Okies, Jason and Rob, thanks for being who you are. Good, good times and bad. Um, Fred, thanks. And thanks. Asshat. I can go all day naming names, but I know better. It's going to take too much. Um, but um, thanks, guys. Um, thank you for being part of this. Um, we're not going anywhere. Don't worry. Um, her and I were talking earlier. If we don't live stream the wedding, we're probably definitely going to live stream one hell of a party. And you guys are all invited. If you don't come to the house. That means you, Rob. <laughs> Wait, what part? We expect you to be on the live stream, Rob. Don't come to the house. Is that what you meant? No. Well, yes. But... Rob can come to the house, but he has to bring his wife with him. Yes. Yes. Chaperone. I mean, we've known you longer, but we like her more. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I, maybe. We love you guys. We'll talk to you later.